I've been waiting for the noise to die down So I could have some time to think You know, he's my, one of my younger nephews And I love his voice, like he's got this jazzy, sultry voice, right, Josiah um, And Joe is just, um, you know, you never would think that he would be a guy a kid who'd grow up to have so much um, talent, you know, and um, as a songwriter, as a singer, when he was a kid, he was like one of those shy kids who felt like, uh, you know, kind of like me in a sense, where like, you know, kind of wimpy uh, and kind of afraid of people, you know, people, but really wanted to be around people, but really held back because, you know, it's like, um, I'm not sure of these strangers. And yet, you know, for the last few years, he's just been putting out amazing music. So please so, check out his channel. He's a great, you know, he's a great talent. And I think, um, you know, he needs more more subscribers. He needs more followers to hear his work. I mean, this kid is talented and, um, you know, he's he's just got so much skill. So that's his, um, that's his uh, page there on, on his channel, which has got about five or six songs, like an EP, right? uh self um i think the self-recorded self-published whatever you want to call it and um yeah he's i think he turns about 17 or 18 this year or is it the other way around i think my niece is you know around 18 or something but it's so uh, it's 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 wonderful watching kids grow up with talent and then that talent being recognized by the parents or by their teachers and by their um you know, by people around them, their classmates who decide, hey, I'd like to get to know you, let's get together and I can play the drums and you can play the guitar or you can play the bass and let's make something, you know, and I, I just, I love that. And that same thing with like kids who get into art, right? You know, if you get, encourage kids early on into art, into music, into, you know, what we call the, um, you know, the creative, you know, uh, creative, um, things of society, right? The creative elements uh, into writing and drawing and all that stuff. One day, you know, you don't know where the, you know, where that talent or that owning of that skill would take them. So with that in mind, you know, um, someone who's been nurturing a lot of um, talent over the last 30 plus years, 25 plus years, is Hawk Sanders from, um, from Rising Sun Comics over in America. Um, I'm a part of that with my Oceania branch of that, uh, with um, Rising Sun Oceania, which comes kind of under the whole um, Punch uh, Studios element of side of things as our creative, um, you know, creative studio from here in New Zealand. And of course, we're going to be talking about that a bit more with all this work that we've got that arrived this week from the US and the horrendous cost of uh, freight. But without further ado, Hawk, uh, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Hey, I'm Hawk Sanders. Uh, you know, I help run Rising Sun. Uh, we've got a little bit of a little bit of everyone, so we're a publisher, and uh, we publish quite a few people's work. And uh, it's uh, you know we're going to discuss more of that at length. And yeah, that's pretty much me. Um, you know, if you, you we've I've been on the channel a couple of times. If you don't know, I usually like to have a drink. Tonight I'm having bourbon on the rocks. My rocks have melted, but I'm still having bourbon. This is uh this is a uh, Jim Beam Black Label is what I've got tonight. I'm a, I'm a Johnny Walker Black Label um fan myself. I was gonna tell so, you when, when that music come on, like I was digging the music, but man, we got to get a different cover. He's got to get a different cover. I, 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 I I'm know. like I'm I, I'm like staring at his crotch with his goose flying. And it's like, it's I like, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be talking the music, about it, man. Right? I dig I, the music. It, I think it's that, but that's the thing, right? That's a 40 year old kid not understanding how the world is, right? Because, yeah, yeah. and I don't downplay that because I think that's the thing about us as adults. We've kind of like ruined innocence for kids for years, for decades, right? With all our, um, with all our, uh, what was called like, you know, like um, trying to get them to grow up too fast and point out, you know, point our fingers at them and stuff. And that's kind of like, it's kind of, you know, for us, like, you know, within Critical, you know, going back to basics and doing uh, comics for kids, right? Creating a comic for a four-year-old girl, 
and to give her her own sort of superhero, right? Bernie Coretigal. And so it, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's like comics. Comics has gotten to a point, and a lot of people are saying this now, I've been watching, you know, the indie comic scene and stuff, and they're saying how, like, people are not making comics for kids anymore. And I'm like, I've been trying that since 2007, you know? And, and we just got this one out last year with Incredible, right, with our comic. Excuse me. And and yet people are saying, you know, there isn't comics for kids. And I'm like, yeah, but we we got we put a kids comic out all ages, right? We went out of our way to make sure that anybody could read the comic and anybody could um, pick it up and give it to someone. Go, hey, this is a story that you could read. Doesn't matter if you're a girl or a boy, right? If you're adult, you know, or whatever, you could read it, enjoy it. So I'm kind of really excited um, to be part of the uh, part of you know that sort of movement to hey let's get kids to read comics again because look I mean with with Rise of Sun Comics you know for the last um, five years since 2019 you guys have basically supported art in the community for New Zealand for my my city here with uh you know with this thing you know um here yeah, with plunge um, plunge comics you know anime you know plunge comics and anime and pop culture convention you know and so there was a lot of support from rising sun comics into my city because myself being here and um and then also the creative community here going hey we need something um around this around pop culture that isn't here uh, and so we did that for the last five years with your great, you know, with Rising Sun, um, you know, publishing's great support. And a lot of people, I think, don't realize that, that like, that when you buy a comic from, you know, um, from Rising Sun Comics, right, and from here, you could support people around the world. You could support artists living in Mexico or, you know, or in Italy or somewhere else or me down here in New Zealand um, because, you know, it's not just... Um, something that's kept sort of like oh it's an american company so it stays in america but if you really you know if you um i mean if you really think about it internet's made it so easy for people to reach out and be helpful anywhere places like kickstarter has made it easy to you know for us you know to a certain aspect uh, aspect of it where we can go go to kickstarter and put up a comic book uh you know with created by a bunch of um, creative people and then put it out there and now then that comic becomes funded by anybody around the world who's interested in it. Now, sadly, uh, you know, it doesn't always uh, deliver the way you you think it will. And because there's so many comics out there, and then the worst thing right now, and a lot of people have, you know, are starting to talk about this now, especially indie creators about the, the um, you know, how AI is coming into it, where people are basically just either... Um, you know, regurgit, you know, putting prompts in and regurgitating uh, comic pages and then selling it as if it's a new comic book without telling people it's AI. And then you got people like myself and yourself with Rising Sun and all the amazing creators there putting up comics and then not getting even eyes to it because they go, oh, well, that's a, you know, that's not as good as that AI comic. You know, that doesn't look like a Jim Lee comic. It's like, yeah, but Jim Lee didn't do that comic. It's somebody else is ripping off Jim Lee. You know to do you know to use his art style to create create those pages so where do you you know uh, what do you think about that you know the idea of like um kickstarter and how um, not only like the big big creators coming to it from the mainstream but also ai comics now being like raising twenty thousand dollars us when a comic book created by say an indie creator can't even reach five hundred dollars okay so um it's a it's a it's a very big and deep talk a topic and a topic is very dear to me right you know and uh i think that that's a it's a two part situation you know uh one is mainstream publishing or near mainstream publishing going up on kickstarter and what i think about that on one hand as a indie publisher i think that i feel like the, the the platform should really be for those people trying to get beyond the 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 indie standpoint and i want to i want to talk about what i mean by indie because i think people will come back to this and we're going to have this discussion on several times i have different forms of indie 
okay? And, and, and we've discussed this at a couple of times, and I've refined this a little bit as we've talked about it over and over again. Personally, myself, I, I look at it like this. There's indie IE, and we've talked about this before, and there's indie Y, right? I-N-D-Y, I-N-D-I-E. And for me, I-N-D-Y, and uh, I've heard people reverse these terms, I-N-D-Y um, is kind of that, that, that the, the, the little bit higher quality of book, you're, you're pushing the envelope. Now, I've heard some people say that's the I-E style for them. So yeah. I've seen these, re, you know, reversed in different ways. But um, uh, the other, you know, the other side of it is, is the the other half of the book is the very independent one. The guy that's printing them off with his with his printer at home, he's stapling them together, uh, he's sewing them together. They're very, uh, they're very much pulpy style books, and they're usually like one offs or. You know, they're one of a kind things. There's going to be very low print run. And mm. these are the kind of, of, of uh, different quality between what you what we're doing, which is staple yeah. books headed toward the mainstream market or trying to get there into right. the mainstream and a book that's being, being cultivated in the apartment. So I've talked about this because those two are different. Those two are a different group that's going to buy that, right? That's a different show. You right. know, you talk about a comic book show, usually you're going to find uh, mainstream publishers um, and you're going to find maybe the big names there. And then you're going to find some indie books there, but you're not going to find the pulpy stuff at that show. Right. Usually those are kind of reserved for more uh, book shows rather than comic book shows or comic book conventions. Right. That's usually where you find that stuff. So it's a little bit of a different, different grab or a different take on it. So this is more refined artwork. You're cleaning it up. You're you're taking the time to actually get it printed somewhere. It's going to through the steps and through the next levels. We're trying to get it on shelves and stores so that you can buy it there. This is where this is at. Now, above that, once you get beyond that, you're kind of in the mainstream market. And the reason why I bring that up is because studios like Boom, IDW, and all those others they may they're making a lot more money than the than your indie creators are. Okay, right. they are, and they may not be making as much as Marvel or DC, but they're still making a lot more than 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 Rising Sun would be, as we're still in the lower lower scale of everything. I'm saying this because we're right now you're seeing the trend of larger publishers going on to kickstarter and funding larger books and i'm not really for certain the the, the publisher in me says hey is that really necessary you could probably hmm. put this book out without having to crowdfund it is that really necessary you know um you've got the resources you've got the means you've got backers you've got you know investors you could probably go and get this book out that way and do, you know, and then the, the, that poses a second question of do, you know, do I think, uh, you know, do I think that it takes away money from regular indie creators? And my answer is yes, it does. It hmm. does take away money from regular indie creators. It does. You've only got so much money to spend. You're choosing where you spend it. You know, um, uh, now in that regard, I think that it's a free market and a free world. And I, 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 by that, I think that they should be allotted to go on to Kickstarter and, and put their book on there, boom. And, 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 uh, dream wave, uh, and what was the other one? There yeah. was another one here recently. Anyway, I've supported a couple of those Kickstarter campaigns I have, and, and we were yeah. talking with some major lead times couple of them have over a year wait for the book. And I'm completely comfortable with that, but that's a whole different topic, right? A lot of people are not comfortable with that, but I am. I'm comfortable with waiting. Um, but um, so do I think it's, you know, overall, do I think it's fair? Um, it's fair, but is it morally sound? Is it morally sound? 
you know, you know, I, I know that what you're putting out, you believe in and that you really want to do some good work and, and that's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see more and more mainstream publishers going to Kickstarter and more of the stuff is going to happen. Like I think, I think GI Joe just finished and it's the biggest comic Kickstarter of all time. Right. Yeah. At three million dollars or four or five, I don't remember how much it took. And I, I, I did fund five. five. Okay, I, I yeah, did back that project. Five. You know, I'm a big GI Joe fan. I backed that project. Boom went right. on there, and they did Lumberjanes, and they did uh, a Farscape. I backed the Farscape project, and both of those are a year wait. I'm completely right. okay with all of that, but yeah. I, I do question as to whether or not it is. Did that take away from me being able to help? other indie indie comics or support those other indie books and the answer is mm. yes it did yes it did i was absolutely 100 percent yes you've got this one here from uh, image comics right alumni here uh hex slash so you've got a hardcover book that would easily right be sitting on a uh, you know in a bookshelf in a bookstore in a comic store at barnes and nobles and all the all the other you know uh comic stores around the world I mean, for us, I think it's what calls in New Zealand or Paper Plus and in libraries. So I kind of look at this and go, well, what's the point of this being here uh, when you could base, you have direct access to the market? It's not like you don't have direct access to the market. You have it. You have all the contacts. It's on your roller decks in the old days, right? It's on your email. It's in your phone book. You have your PR manager out there who can do that. You have HR. You got your entire frigging team of people who are getting who are paid as you know to do to get you those um get your books in those comic stores yet you want to bring that comic to here because you know this is where okay the, the current audience for collectors is right and this is i think this is what it really comes down to i think is the collector market is on crowdfunding it's yes. not in the comic store right they've they've kind of uh uh I, and I think that that's absolutely true. They know that they can get to a direct market that way. And, yeah. and that's why we do it too, right? We want a direct market of people that are willing to support indie books. Right. So, um, so I don't really, those, those, those are my conundrum. I feel like everyone right. should, it should be a fair game and everyone should be able to do it. And that's the way it is right now. But does yeah. it hurt the indie publishing? I believe it does in a way. I do believe yeah. it does. Um, I think that it actually takes, uh, you know, uh, dollar bucks out of someone's pocket that they could yeah. be spending with an indie publisher. And, you know, it doesn't mean that it's fair or unfair. It just is. So I yeah. don't really know how to fix such a thing. And I don't think we can fix such a thing. I, I don't even know if I would want to fix such a thing. It's just that it, 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 that is something that's happening. Uh, so in that regard, that's kind of how I feel about the indie publisher, the bigger publishers being on Kickstarter as I, I that, that I feel like it does take bucks away from indie publishing and um, they should have the ability to, um, to reach out and, and uh, get those in, in the market another way. Mm. Um, maybe this is, you know, maybe there's some things that we're missing in this and why, that I don't quite see. I'm, I'm willing to willing to be wrong. I'm usually wrong quite a bit. Um, and, uh, you know, it's part of the whole process. So uh, so that's that's that kind of uh, that kind of take on it. Cook it down. Be well. Catch you later.